Hey guys, it's Simon here with Caddis Fly Shop and Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. We're going to be tying some flies for you today. Um, today I have a uh, craft for spawning shrimp. Um, I've been using this for surf perch off the coast and it's kind of been crushing. Um, but you can use it for all sorts of other stuff like bonefish or if you tied it on a more stout hook, uh, trigger fish. But it's just got some orange under to mimic um, eggs and it's brushed out so that when it gets wet it kind of craft fur gets translucent and it shows the orange through the body so um, I know the surf perch like that orange color so it's been working really good for me so I'm going to show you guys how I tie it. So looking at this fly you know it's got a craft fur up front a little bit of bucktail um, crystal flash for the antennas uh, you know rubber legs for the claws there's this cool stuff called um, body fuzz from Vivas. It's like a you know stringy chenille that's UV colored. Um, it works really great for the legs. And um, I used heavy lead eyes back here and uh, bead chain eyes uh, to kind of stimulate you know eggs or just a hot spot. So um, it's been working good for me. So I will show you how I tie it. Um, the hook I'm using is an SL11 3H size eight from Gamakatsu. Um, that's like the main hook I've been using lately in the surf. Um, works fine. I use it in a variety of sizes. So, getting this hook on here, um, the thread I'm using is Vivis 140 denier power thread. It's pretty strong stuff. Um, you know, you don't really need thread this strong, but I think it helps quite a bit. Um, especially for flies that are going to get a little beat up like this, it helps. So, we'll take some wraps to the back here. And um, first thing I like to do is secure in the, uh, the bead chain eyes and the, the little lead eyes. So I use two different eyes for this. These are hairline heavy lead eyes, um, size small and the color is nickel. Um, this you know, provides a little bit more weight and these can be omitted if you're fishing in maybe a lower tide or um, you know, if you're using this for bonefish, if the tide is out um, you know, you're going to want a variety of different weights um, of your flies. So then the next eye that I'm using is this um, fluorescent bead chain eye um, in medium. And if you've never used these, you do have to use like wire cutters or scissors or something to snip the eyes off. But um, I'm using these more for, um, you know, a hot spot slash um, like to mimic, you know, a spawning shrimp full of eggs. So. Um, once I get these sort of secured in, I am going to secure them a little bit more with some UV resin. But the key here is you need to leave just a little bit of space back here to tie on the last bit of craft fur. So you do want to leave a little bit of space right by the hook eye. Um, so now I will put a little bit of Solaris Bone Dry on here. I really like this stuff for um, coating things and also um, coating things and uh, securing things it works really good especially if you want to secure something before it uh, you know get it all spread out and then cure it it works really good so we'll cure that really quick and then we'll continue uh, with what we're doing here so now I'll take wraps back to the hook bend here and the first thing I like to put in is a little tuft of um, calf tail um, and this is fluorescent orange calf tail from Hairline. Um, the fibers up at the top are longer, so I like to save that for the, the back. And shorter down, they're shorter. So just for like this, this front bit of the fly right here, um, kind of like, I guess you could call it the nose down here. Um, I like to tie a little bit of this in and try to get the fibers as even as possible right here. And they can stick out a little bit because this whole fly is going to extend out just a little bit. Um, but basically we're just tying that in for a little hot spot there and to build like the front head of the shrimp. Um, so we'll tie that in and then next um, I like to put in the uh, shrimp eyes. So these are EP um, crab and shrimp eyes um, in size small. Um, I like these, they work good. There's all sorts of other kinds. It's not super critical, but I do like these. So. I will tie these in like this. And again, you know, this whole fly is going to extend out. The end of the fly will end up around here, maybe. So you can push these eyes forward just a little bit, a little more than you think you probably can. So 
I would tie one in, then we'll tie the other one in. Um, if you have a junk pair of scissors, um, I would probably use that to tie this or to snip this um, the monofilament that these are made of because it'll probably be rough on your scissors if you have a really nice pair. So I have like a junker pair of scissors that I cut wire with and stuff. Okay, so now that we have those tied in, the next thing I like to tie in is the antenna, which I use uh, crystal flash for that. And so this is a fluorescent orange crystal flash, this stuff. Um, and that's what I like to use just because it matches the other colors of the fly. And so I will tie in one little bit here and then bend it over itself and, and bring the other end of the antenna forward here. And I normally don't worry about the length until um, I get almost done with the fly and then I'll trim it up. So I like to tie those in and get those pretty much even. We're looking even with where they come off. And then the next thing I like to tie in, um, this upper part of the shrimps, I mean, it looks like a nose. They call it a, a, a rostrum or rostrum. Um, that's that like kind of sharp nose thing that sticks off, off off a shrimp. And the I like to use just a little bit of bucktail to um, help that like poke up and out. And so I put that under the craft fur. For some f flies, I will put it over. Um, but for this specific one, I like to put it under. So I just take a little bit and I'm pulling from the center of a bucktail. So I'm just taking the natural brown color. Any bucktail will work. Um, I'm using a gray one because I will also be tying the fly with the gray bucktail fiber so I can just make use of it. And it's nice to be able to use that uh, center of the bucktail, find a use for it. So I will take this and split it in between the um, hook bend here and then I will pinch it down here. And again, we're going to want this stuff to poke out a little bit because the whole fly is going to extend forward. So I'll take some wraps back here and snip this off. Next thing I like to do is um, I like to build up just a little bit of bulk before I put the legs on so that they flare out. And so the next thing we're going to do is legs, um, shrimpy crabby legs from Hairline in tan. Um, you'll see there's a clear middle and then a tan tip. I like to um, use the tan uh, tips, you know, stick out and then maybe there's a little bit of clear attaching to the body, but, you know, I prefer to use the... Uh, tan end and not the clear end. And so again, you know, these can stick out a little more than you think probably. Um, they're going to add a lot of movement to the front of your fly, make it look more lifelike, and um, you do want them to be able to be seen. And you can always trim them down, so I like to have them stick out just a little bit. And the antenna, I like to trim up the antenna and the legs, you know, after I, uh, after I finish the fly so that I can match it with the proportions and everything that I ended up with. Okay, so that looks good. Now we will snip this excess off here. Okay, now that we've got that, the next thing I, I need to do is take some craft fur. This is extra select craft fur from Hairline in tan. This is the color I use. You know, you can swap a variety of colors with this stuff, but um, the thing you have to do with craft fur is kind of even out the, the end tips. So you kind of pull out the long ones and place them in, even with the shorter ones. That's how I even it up, because it's too soft to put in a hair stacker. Um, and so I don't, you don't need a lot, just like a small pinch here. This is just, you know, really building that, that nose or that rostrum of the shrimp right here. And then I will split that around the hook bend here and tie that in and kind of measure. And again, this whole thing's gonna stick out and then when it gets wet, it's gonna slim down too. So if it looks kind of ugly, it'll look a lot prettier when it gets wet. Um, so we'll take wraps to the back with that, snip all that excess. And then I will just kind of even out the body right here because we're going to put this chenille on, um, this body fruzz from Vivis. And so we'll kind of take wraps right up to here. 
I like to flip the flyover right now. And I will put this body fuzz on. It comes on a spool like this, Vivis UV body fuzz and tan. Um, it's really good stuff. This has really long legs that have um, they have shorter body fuzz with shorter fibers and they also have um, a really short one called Lucent Body. So I've been messing around with a bunch of their stuff lately and I like it. So um, For this part, I like to use glue or some sort of adhesive to make sure that when this goes on, it sticks. Um, I have my Surf Perch flies with when I don't do this they get a little beat up and I do want them to last if I'm, you know, the nice thing about fishing in the surf is you don't really like break off and get snagged on too much stuff, at least off the Oregon coast where I've been fishing, but the fish will kind of beat up your flies. So I like to try to make them as durable as I can. So um, right now with this chenille, the trick is to kind of spike it up like this um, and get it looking all spiky, which will help the legs really stick out. And so. Now we're just going to slowly take her wraps all the way to the back of this right now. And I try to wrap it pretty tight to get as many legs in there as I can. And then I will also wrap back here between these two guys. And I will normally trim it right back here. Okay, so now we still have that glue under there, which will cure real quick. This will just help the fly last just a little bit longer. Um, you can use glue, whatever. I've used glue. Um, this is the first time I'm using Solarize, but I'm sure it's going to uh, cure through this stuff. Yeah, it did. So that'll just help it last a little longer. I've had the chenille slip on me after fishing it. And uh, so the next thing we need to do is add more of that, um, what's it called, this calf tail here. And for this part, I'm pulling from this upper portion with the longer fibers. Um, and this will, when it gets wet, this will kind of show through the top piece of craft fur that we're gonna put on after this. And it'll look like a, a female shrimp that's full of eggs. So it kind of is a cool look when it gets wet. So I like to tie it in here. Um, I made a mistake. I actually tie it in between these bead chain eyes. So. just like that and try to get it kind of even here and then we'll snip the excess and then um, a little bit of ice stub I like to fill in that spot and add a little bit so this is UV ice stub and orange I like to um, kind of pull it out into these long strands here and then I will put a little bit of it on top of here It'll add some flash, and this is treated with UV, um, you know, it has UV properties, so it really kind of glows in the sun. And then the excess um, ice stub I have, I will put on here and fill in the last spot between these bead chain eyes right here. Cool, and now we're on the last step. Craft fur again, craft fur tan. Small bunch of it, try to even the tips out. And then this will be tied onto the back. This is why you had to leave some space back here. And this, so I like to measure now here. This is going to go, you know, just about to where the end of that is going, maybe a little bit behind. So I like to measure first, and then um, I will tie this in. You don't have to worry about splitting it between the hook because it's far enough away where it doesn't really get in the way. And then once that is down, I will snip this excess. And we'll whip finish and then we're done. So this fly for me, you know, this is like one of my most productive flies for the surf. I have a couple of other shrimp variations, but I do like this one a lot. Um, I have a lot of confidence in this fly. I'll put just a little bit of solar res back here to keep these wraps good. And uh, I will probably get a little bit on the bottom of this eye too, just to kind of make sure nothing moves around. And then we'll cure it real quick, and then we're done. So um, it looks a little messy right now. I'll even up the hairs, and it'll look like the first one, I promise. <clears throat> I'll also trim the legs going from the back down like this a little bit. Yeah, just like that, we'll snip up any extras here. 
And then if we take it off and split this hair, know that this goes over the back now. And then you can kind of see this is showing through. It's a great shrimp fly for saltwater fly fishing. I'll trim these antenna real quick. Um, yeah, give it a go. It's been working really good for me off the coast. Um, if you try it in the salt or something, let us know how it works. Thanks.